Calibrating cybernetics. Talk to him now. AT Andre. Come on, Dre. Yep. Tri tripping with. Let's go. Woo! Tripping with Theo Bowl. What's your name? Theo So Bowl. Yeah. Dr drink, drink, drink it. Uh, let's go. Tripping with Theo Bowl. Tripping, tri tri tripping, tripping. Uh, Hey, mic check one, two. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Tripping with Theo Bold. I'm your host, Andre Theo Bold, and welcome to the show. As you guys can see, this is a 6 eight centric episode. As I promised, every episode that contains the number six and or eight will be dedicated to a 6 eight centric episode. Before we go any further, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend, and do all that fun internet stuff, like the old people say. Also, AT is where it's at on most forms of social media, so make sure you follow me. Okay, boom. So we here. You guys know how we do over here in tripping with Theo Bold Land. We gotta get we gotta get started with the tongue twisties. We gotta make sure the brain and the, and the tongue is coordinated, you know, so there'll be minimal trippage on the show but if we trip that's okay the show is called tripping with theo bold that's what we do we trip baby literally and figuratively that's what we do on the show so let me stop bull driving and let me go ahead and get to it all right here we go so today's tongue twisty is brought to you by the letter s, s, s. all right so real quick let's get these tongue twisties knocked out pause all right, here we go. Uh, number one, here we go. Boom. Shelly Sherman shivered in her sheer shawl in the shady shelter. Shelly Sherman shivered in her sheer shawl in the shady shelter. One more again. Shelly Sherman shivered in her sheer shawl in the shady shelter. Look like I'm about to say some sugar. All right, let me stop messing around. Uh, number two, here we go. Silly Sally sing songs about her senses. Silly Sally sing songs about her senses. Last time, Silly Sally sing songs about her senses. And final tongue twisty. Shelly Sherman shivered in a sheer short shirt. I thought I just did that one. Oh, no. Man, Shelly be shivering. Okay. I guess we got to warm Shelly up, huh? Here we go. Yeah. Why can't I get this thing to move up? There we go. Shelly Sherman shivered in a sheer short shirt. Man, Shelly got to put some clothes on. Shelly Sherman shivered in a sheer shirt shirt. I said sheer shirt shirt. Shelly Sherman shivered in a sheer short shirt. And yay, tongue twisters are done. Got those out the way. Now we can go ahead and get on with today's episode. So before we do that, uh, you guys might be able to tell. Hold on, let me get myself situated right quick. I don't know why my computer, there we go. Let me just get myself situated. You know, I want to set things up in a way to where I can be successful so we can be successful, right? That's what it's about. If I succeed, you succeed, we succeed. There we go. Boom. All right. That's how I want it. Okay. So, uh, you guys might not be able to tell I'm drinking out of a, a six triple A mug. Uh, shout out to, uh, to, uh, Colonel Edna Cummings for giving me this mug. You know, it has some, uh, former six triple eight members on i'm not sure if you guys can see it that far i'll probably put it up in the in the link or the description but yeah on this mug you know you got my grandma on here you got um you got uh miss anna robertson you got miss lena king miss rudock whom i met i met pretty much all i think i met three of these ladies on here not including my grandmother um and man they were all sharp man as a tack and they 
in the late nineties, man. They were sharp, man. They see if, see if I can cuss yet. Let me see how much time, where am I at on time? I want to make sure I don't get this video pulled down for no reason. Okay, yeah, we at the five minute mark. I can talk a little free. Yeah, man. These women, man, they they were sharp as a tack, man. They would cuss your ass out. I mean, they they it was amazing to see how sharp and just connected and intact these women still were in their late 90s hundreds even you know i think some of these women lived to be like 101 102 anywho um i meant to i should have been i should have been plugged this way back but i'm gonna do it now if you guys could um i should have put the image up here but if you want to find out more information about the six triple eight or be in the know on the six triple eight Go to Instagram and follow 6888W2. That's 6888W2. Um, that Instagram page is ran by Edna Cummings, and she has all the information. She's like, she's the ringleader of it, man. Like, she she has all the information, you know, everything about what's going on. So make sure you give 6888W2 a follow for more information. So... Before I get into the book, because like I said, I'm still reading the book. You know, I'm reading slow, but I'm making sure I digest everything. I'm making sure I process everything so, so uh, you know, I'm well informed. But real quick, I had to show this right quick. So as you guys may or may not know, um, there's a movie coming out about the 6888. It's called The 6888. And it's uh, produced, it's a Tyler Perry production, and it comes out on Netflix, I believe, on December 6th. So I knew, I've known about this movie for a long time coming out. Um, the movie was, I'm not going to drop names, but the movie was originally picked up or supposed to be uh, picked up by a well-known actor. Um, that actor got put on another project or picked up another bigger project and then basically handed off the project to uh Tyler Perry and um the movie comes out December 6th you guys may have seen the trailer um I can't wait for it to come out but I have some um mm, how, should, how should I put it I'm cautiously optimistic right I'm cautiously and when see I'm not trying to be negative I'm just ca I'm just cautiously optimistic okay and here's why okay um let me start with the negative and then go to the positive right I like to I like to build up so I have mixed feelings about the film itself you know um I feel like uh um well to my knowledge no one from the movie or that was associated with the movie reached out to any of the remaining six triple eight members or the descendants. So to me, it's like if you're making a film about somebody and you got people that are alive, why not go and reach out to them to get more information? Right. To me, it's like, I mean, yeah, people can do research by looking at other movies. They can look at other documentaries, but why not get it? straight from the source you know so that was that made me feel kind of weird you know you had um all these all these all these women that are still out there then you had the descendants that that grew up with them you know you could have asked questions and just got i'm not saying they needed our approval for the film but it would have been nice to just say hey look we're trying to make this film as dope as possible we're trying to just gather all the information possible um, and anything you could tell us would really help us out. We didn't, we didn't, from my, from my understanding and my recollection, that never happened. Um, also, uh, minor thing, um, no shade to Kerry Washington. Kerry Washington is playing Major Charity Adams. Um, Kerry Washington is a dope actress, you know, hands down, dope actress, you know, but Kerry, I believe, is in her late 40s. And Major Adams was mid twenties tops during her service in World War II. So, um, 
I know Kerry Washington can pull off playing mid thirties, early thirties, but I don't know if she can pull off mid twenties, but we'll see. We'll see. Right. So like I said, um, that's like, that's more just constructive criticism, but I mean, I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad that they're uh, getting the word out there. Hopefully this film is a, uh, is a, is a, um, is a launch pad for more things six triple eight centric to come you know um the uniforms like yeah me and my mom were talking about this because my mom and edna uh uh they're basically along along with myself we're all turning into six triple eight nerds you know so we well really my mom and edna they go to conferences and they'll go to different museums and you know um like they just know from their experience and their research and books that they've read. And when the trailer dropped, uh, we looked at the uniforms and we were like, nah, this ain't it. <laughs> like these uniforms, like if, if you pay attention to detail, like the uniforms, um, are not, uh, there's some minor things wrong with the uniforms. Right. But that's neither here nor there. I just hope that it's a solid foundational film that this can launch, other projects into you know um but i will say this man and knock on wood man um i hope you know i hope medea don't show up in this movie yo if medea show up in this movie man yeah if medea show up in this movie yeah i'm gonna go ham in the review I, i'm not holding nothing back yo i'm not holding anything back so because look there's a time and place for silliness and goofiness, you know, there's a time and place for silliness and goofiness. And now is not the time. Now is the time to get the narrative straight and to let it be known who these women were and what they did and why what they did was so important, you know? So anywho, December 6th, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a, do a review of some sort. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but I might do a live review. Like I might watch it. And, um, but I can't show the movie on the screen, obviously, but I might have the audio. I'm not sure how YouTube works with the audio and movies. They might not like it. I don't know, but I'm going to do some sort of review on this film. Um, and I'm going to do it like right when it comes out and, um, yeah. And we're going to hope for the best. Like I said, um, I saw the trailer, um, the cinematic or the cinematography of the trailer looks very good. You know, there's the part where they're in the boat and there was, a, um, I think a miss, it was a, it was a, um, underwater missile or something that like, I think, uh, just missed that, just missed the boat or the ship that they were on or one of the waves of the people that one of the waves of the six triple eight that were going to Europe and um it rocked the boat so you saw that you saw that part in the film that's a that's a major part that was something that was like you know well talked about in all the books or all the information i've been gathering so i saw that um but yeah um so yeah so look out for some sort of review special review of the 6888 when it comes out on netflix on december 6th so now, let's continue with One Woman's Army, um, which basically accounts for, or is, it's basically like a, um, a memoir, I guess, of, because it's not a journal, it's her talking back about what happened during this time period, but it's basically uh, Major Charity Adams recollection of the six triple eight or her time while serving with the six triple eight. So real quick. Um, so right now I am on, I believe it's chapter five, but it's not organized like that. It's just organized by date. So the date I am on right now is do 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 boop. I think it's first. Come on, go back. Come on. 
Yeah, the date I'm on right now is January 1st through May 21st, 1943. So um, basically, this talks about like how she um, had to take many trips away from Fort Des Moines. And then um, she had to take a trip to Arizona um, to visit this post. It was a fort. I can't pronounce it. Fort. Hot Fort Hachuca. I don't know. I, sh I should have looked this up before. I but I, it's Fort. It's spelled H U A C H U C A. Um, and I was reading this, and uh, Charity's interesting, man. Like when I was reading this uh part, like I said, I'm just reacting to what I'm reading. I'm not like you know speculating or well, I guess I am kind of speculating, but I'm just reacting to um what I'm reading. So basically she was on this, uh, train ride to Arizona. And, um, basically what happened was when they were on this train, they were on this train with like a bunch of other soldiers. And, um, th the women were the minority on this train, I guess, you know? Um, and, uh, basically there was like, you know, drunk soldiers and sailors that would, that would like try to, um, to, um, I guess not, not kick down doors, but they were checking doors to see if doors were open to, uh, to see, to see what the women were up to, you know? So, um, to me, this was interesting because, so basically what happened, long story short is she's on this train and like the soldiers and, and the sailors are drunk or whatever. They're trying to, to, to open up doors or whatever. And, you know, she's like in this state of like, Oh man, I'm nervous. What's going on? Hey, Oh Lord, like what, what, what's going on with these, with these men's trying to, trying to break up in our room, you know? And then, um, one, uh, there's a knock at the door and then she opens it. And then, um, a white soldier comes or was at the door and he basically was like, um, yeah, there's a captain that wants to see you or that wants to meet with you, you know? Um, so she ended up meeting with the captain, with the other captain. Oh no. The white dude, white soldier came to the door, knocked at the door and said, hey, hey, is it OK if a captain comes to visit you because he's curious about your unit or whatever? So the um, captain comes to the door. It's a young white male. He knocks at the door. She opens it. And then they walk through all these carts, all these trains. They walk through all these like like uh, carts or whatever. And they go in the back and they have dinner with roses and stuff. And then she leaves it at that. So to me, that was funny. You know, that was funny because, um, let me go, let me go ahead and, uh, go back a little bit. Okay. So I used to, I used to read these books back in the day. Yeah. I used to read these, um, pool books or I used to, re I used to read these pickup artist books. You know, I used to read, like I read the art of Mac in the Mac within I read mystery method. I read the game. I read all that. Right. And basically one thing that was repeated in the book was, was, um, was women when it comes to, uh, adult relations, right. Um, women don't want to feel like, Oh, right. Like they don't want to feel like that. Right. So what happens is there's this whole plausible deniability thing where, you know, you have to pour the book. You have to basically invite women or a woman out somewhere and you have to basically allow things, allow for things to happen. You know, so like I think I was reading Mystery Method and, you know, he was talking about building a time bridge and then you invite a woman back to your place and, you know, because a woman's going to want to be like, oh, I went to I went to so and so's house to go look at the fish tanks and and um, one thing led to another. Then whoopsie. Right. I think that was that. I think I think that was that moment, you know, because the way she set everything up in the beginning was it was, oh, 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 Lord, I was scared. All these men was drunk and they was they were they were just banging on doors and they were trying to break in the doors. I didn't know what to do. So if you were afraid of dudes banging on doors and coming in 
when there was a knock at the door, why'd you answer the door? Hmm? <laughs> and then if you answered the door, why did you uh follow the dude that you didn't know all the way through some carts to go get some? Look, there's nothing wrong with having a door. I, I do not look, I'm not, I'm not trying to shame anybody, right? If Charity Adams did her thing, man, she did her thing, man. She she she's a grown woman, man. She did her thing, you know. Um, ain't no, look, ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying when I read this, I was like, nah, she's trying to she trying to cover something up, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You know what I'm saying? Okay, enough of that. That that's I'm not trying to make the whole episode about that. But to me, that's what made me like laugh out loud. Cause, because because when I read that, I was like, mm hmm. Yeah, nah. Yeah, it was yeah, it was it was more to it than that. But anyways, um the interesting the interesting thing about this chapter was you kind of see Major Adams, you see her grow or you see her grow more into her role um as the commanding officer, right? Like this is where you start seeing her problem solve and how she has to go about solving problems, you know? So, um there was one instance where there was a fireman. Like, I don't, I'm not too familiar with like military terms and like how things are set up, but there was a uh, fireman that was in there. Uh, let me just make sure I get my facts straight. Um, okay. This thing is not acting right. Right. There was a fireman um, that basically wasn't keeping his room clean and she was intimidated by this fireman. Um, and uh, when she, when her quarters got inspected, you know, she always got dinged because of his sloppiness. So it just kept happening over and over again. And she had to get this dude to clean his room or to clean the area he was in. And he, um, but she was too afraid to do it. So she basically had, she basically threw a temper tantrum and like threw a chair or threw furniture out of his room and was like, good, like just, just going off on him. And then she went back to her room and was nervous, like, oh, man, <laughs> it was like you could tell she was like, like, that was probably a funny moment. You know, she probably like she went off on him threw, threw some chairs out the door, you know, and was barking and whatever, getting mad. And then she ran to her room and locked herself in and was scared because she was like, how is he going to react? And after that, the dude cleaned up his room and there was nothing else to like worry about, you know. So that was a, a funny, interesting uh, little story. Um there was a, I didn't know this, but there were older recruits that, that were recruited there or that were recruited to be in the six triple eight. So you had women there that were in their like mid forties, maybe even older. I don't know if they were older than mid forties, but you got to keep in mind charity at the time is maybe like early twenties and you have a 43 year old or someone that's in their mid forties coming in. And, um, it was funny because, uh, cause the old <laughs> Cause I can see this happening, man. This this shit was funny. Um, uh, what's basically what happened was, um, uh, this older woman came in and she was like cold or whatever, and then she actually went to Charity's like room or, um, it says yeah, it says it says here, um. When she raised her head, she saw me sitting in my warm corner and reached over and pulled my shoulder as she said to me, get up, Missy, and give me that chair. You're younger than I, and I want to warm my knees. Like, she's talking to her commanding officer that way. So that was, that's, that's hilarious, man. Little stories like that. Um, then um, she talked about how she had to deal with uh, bully officers and how she had to get them to, you know, um, come to like basically she had to force them to apologize when they uh got out of pocket um and this is another thing man um uh i'm gonna let me let me talk about this first because um i don't want to end on this note because it's um it's very degrading but it's just a fact of what things were back in the military or back in those days but um basically um you know, there was this whole fanfare of when women were going to train to be in the women's army corps. And it was this whole big parade thing. They were in the papers, everything. It was this, it was like this fanfare almost, you know, in the beginning, but then 
the per- the perception shifted to hey is this organized prostitution you know so that became kind of like the rumor on the street you know so um which is very you know very messed up man you know and i think there are books on this my mom told me about a book that really goes into details on that i got to get the i got to get the details for that book i'll put it in the link in, in the description uh below but um that's something that she mentioned in in this chapter but uh back to the stories um or just what she was dealing with um man like they were i didn't i didn't like i never even thought about this but the men back in world war ii they were drafted right but the women volunteered right so the women's army corps or the women's army auxiliary corps was like volunteer based so um, there was a situation or something whether she she basically talked about a situation where where a new group of recruits came in or they got dropped off and they acted like they didn't want to be there you know and she's like wait a minute like how are y'all gonna volunteer for something and you act like you don't want to be here so she did some investigation she did some research or whatever and found out that um what their side of the story was was when the when the men deployed off or when they went to the train stations to go deploy to go to go to um like pt or whatever women like their wives you know what i'm saying their wives their um maybe like yeah you know, like their wives or their girlfriends when they went to the train station to go see them off when the train pulled off there would be other um, military officers there with um with like paperwork and they would trick these women into thinking that they would say hey do you want to see your your loved ones come home faster or do you want to see them come home quicker and they were like hell yeah so they would give them paperwork to sign and they're thinking they're signing a petition but they were signing to join the whack so that to me was messed up you know so um so uh charity found out that that was like one of the stories of what was going on and then she basically she meaning her and her um not company but her um and her organization they found a way to make sure that that didn't happen anymore so i didn't like that's crazy i never even thought about something like that happening you know so you got to watch what you sign you know thank thank goodness for technology man you can sign you can take a picture of something first and then go home and talk to your lawyer and then okay i'm not getting to that you guys know you guys already know uh make sure you know what you're signing is the name of the, is the name of the game um and then uh there was another situation where there was um uh like brown mess on this window like every morning when they would do their inspection you know um the women would do their cleaning or whatever to make sure that their quarters were you know, ready for inspection. And when they left, there was always a brown spot on this window. And um, the women that were in charge of cleaning that area would get in trouble because of the uh, brown spot on the window. And they and it's, it just kept happening over and over and over and over again. So Charity like punished them and then it kept happening. So she was like, wait a minute, these people don't want to be willingly punished. So there's something going on here. So she did some more digging and found out that, you know, uh, basically, um, I think when they were doing an inspection and everything was clean, they saw the brown spot happen like right in front of them. And they were like, yo, where is this coming from? So they went upstairs and found out it was another person that was upstairs, another um, a recruit that was upstairs. And she was chewing tobacco and spitting it out the window and it, or, or spitting it out the window and it fell on their window. So this whole talk about nicotine came up and, you know, basically the female, um, um, what is it? The, uh, the uh, female recruit who was chewing the tobacco and was spitting it out the window was like, Hey, look, if y'all can smoke cigarettes, you know, I should be able to choose. I should be able to chew my tobacco because it's all nicotine. Don't tell me how to take in my nicotine. So they made special, uh, provisions for her to, chew her tobacco and do whatever but i think she had to make sure she knew where she spit 
her tobacco out and stuff. But that was like, those were the kind of things that, that she was dealing with in this chapter. But um, the surprising thing in this chapter, and I'm surprised that this isn't even like a movie. This is like a script for a show or a movie, man. But this was deep. Um, So there were some recruits that got dropped off and um, they were all white where one of them wasn't white right but she thought she was white um and um they were all like best friends they all wanted to go serve in the whack and they were all they all thought they were gonna be together while they were serving the country and they were all excited and then when they got dropped off uh the military um by basically took one of the girls and separated her because her card had the word C on it and C meant you were colored, you know? So she was like, no, this is a mistake. I'm not black. I'm white. Like, what are you talking about? And when they were, um, on the, uh, quarters or whatever, um, or on the, when they were, um, uh, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm calling it the right word, but when they were at the training site, um, they segregated the black women from the white women. So they put this woman, who thought she was white but really black with the black women and she never associated or was around black people so she was freaking out um and you know she was like yo this is a mistake i'm not black i'm white you know and it goes to show you the military knows knows more about you than you think you know so anyways there was more investigation that went back and then her um i think she found out that her mom uh, uh, slept with a black dude and her father was really black, you know, and then her mom never told her. So she ended up like being mad at her parents or mad at her folks and was like, nah, I'm going to stay and I'm going to serve and I'm just going to, I'm going to just get through it, you know? So that's actually a pretty crazy story. Um, but she used a funny, but charity used a mate, sorry, major Adams used a funny word to describe the, um, the, uh, girl's father. She said, uh, he was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, highlight it. Give me a second. Um, yeah, <laughs> she said, uh, she said, uh, this woman had only had to, this woman had been the only Negro in, in their town. Um, years before a ne a young Negro man became snowbound while passing through the town <laughs> um remained to work and marry her mother she was born and then her father died since she looked white and everyone else was white the matter of race never came up um as a matter of fact the issue had not come up since the time her birth certificate had been recorded so the government got her birth certificate and knew that she was black but then she joined the military and found out she was that's that's a hell of a way to find out you black I said, found out that's a hell of a way to find out that you black, you know? Um, but now nah, I just thought that was a funny word that she used. She said snowbound. A young Negro man became snowbound. <laughs> maybe I misread that, but to me, it kind of says maybe it's a double entendre. I don't know, but that's the way I interpreted it. Anywho. Um, so that's where that chapter ends. Uh, before I go any further, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And uh, tell a friend to tell a friend and do all that fun internet stuff, like the old people say. Um, but like I said, I'm reading all this information to find out, to, to see if I can find clues on where my grandma, or to see if my grandma was in the vicinity of charity, right? I want to see if, you know, there are certain areas where my grandma, I'm like, you know what? The lady she's describing, that sounds like that could be my grandma, you know? Um, or you never know, maybe my grandma's name is mentioned in this book, but I doubt it because my mom would have probably told me by now because my mom already read the book. But anywho, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, be on the lookout for um, six, the 6888 movie review. I will do that as soon as the movie drops in December. And um, like I said before, many other times, make sure you guys... Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend. Do all that fun internet stuff like the old people say. Also, AT is where it's at on most forms of social media. So follow me. 
And um, I think that's all I have to say. So without further ado. I'm out of here, folks. Peace. Mm. Yep. Tripping with Theo Bowl. Let's go. Caliente. Tripping, tripping, tripping. Yep. Tripping. Tripping, trip, trip, tripping. Tripping with Theo Bowl. Tripping with Theo Bold.